السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we will have a brief review over the coming 40-45 minutes about right-sided uh, structures, right ventricle and right-sided valves, how and what to assess and focus in on the echo. For the sake of time, we will be focusing on um, the important tips and tricks and the pitfalls that the majority of us uh, might um, uh, frequently fall in and how to manage and how to focus to avoid. The right ventricle, as most of us know, is a very complex structure. Um, from the frontal view, it is like a triangular with uh, one side representing the inlet, then the body towards the apex of the heart, and then the other, the upper arm of the triangle representing the outlet of the right ventricle. However, if we cut it in cross section, it will be representing a crescent surrounding partially the left ventricular circum uh, uh, circular fashion. Uh, so what we need to know that the right ventricle is a 3D convex, triangular, crescentic, or a crescentic V-shaped, like some authors like to name it, a structure. It is difficult to assess by the standard two-dimensional echo views. Uh, and for the past decades, there was enormous attention drawn to the left heart side. Uh, thus, the right ventricle has been for long named the forgotten ventricle and the uh, right side valves were the forgotten valves. However, recently we started to focus a huge amount of uh, uh, our interest on the right ventricle because we have realized that, that RV dysfunction has significant impact in morbidity and mortality. Um, in each of these um, um, standard use for echocardiography, we uh, have a quick and a good look on either the right ventricle or one of its important structures, the parasternal long axis view, parasternal short axis view, and the modification for parasternal long axis view showing the RV inflow, and there is another one for the RV outflow, the apical full chamber view, and the subcostal views. Again, we are emphasizing that we are pointing in our short lecture about the tips and tricks and the bit tools that we need to manage and correct. For example, in the apical four chamber view, that is a fixed and a critical part in every echo study. Um, I would like to draw your attention to this part of the screen first. We can have uh, the cut uh, representing the apical four chamber view in one, two, or three alignments. As we can imagine, in one, we will have a certain diameter for the right ventricular cavity. In two, it will be a different diameter. And three is a third and a variable different diameter. What is the ideal? All of them, like one and two and three in the apical four chamber views, are presenting the four chambers of the heart. However, this one is named the RV modified apical four chamber view, where we have RV apex representing the apex of uh, uh, the viewing uh, field. And we are expanding and extending the viewing uh, angle to represent the maximum uh, parts of the right ventricular and right atrial structures. This is good for assessment of the tricuspid valve for proper alignment with the tricuspid jet. However, when we are targeting to get to that proper standardized dimension quantification and measurements of uh, the right ventricle, we need the proper apical full chamber view in a standardized fashion to get standardized measurements. And thus, the apex of the viewing field should be the left ventricular apex. So this is a proper, very proper apical full chamber view. However, with some rotations of the probe, keeping the LV apex at uh, the probe, uh, uh, we uh, will take the viewing rotation with the widest dimensions of the right ventricular cavity. This and here, this is the RV focused apical full chamber view where we can get the dimensions of the RV basal, RV mid, and the longitudinal dimension of the RV cavity. Um, I emphasize again that this because of the, standard, the standardization is a critical part 
for the prognostic affections and for comp comparing today's measurements with future measurements. Um, looking and focusing now on the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve has three distinct leaflets, the anterior, the septal leaflet and the posterior leaflet. We need to know by heart that the anterior and septal leaflets are the uh, largest and the most contributing for the valvular function, the coaptation, while the posterior is the smallest in size and the least contributor in the valve coaptation. In the standardized 2D transthoracic views, again, as we have mentioned earlier, uh, we have the right ventricular inflow, the parasternal short axis, the parasternal long axis does not view any of the right-sided valves, so it is not mentioned here, the apical pole chamber and the subcoastal views. Um, I need to uh, have your attention that in each of our views that have the interventricular septum or the extension of the interventricular septum, the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve is a fixed structure which is originating from the interventricular septum. This is the case in the subcostal view in the apical pole chamber view and because the junction between the aortic valve towards the interatrial septum, i.e. the right atrial side. This is the continuation or the extension of the interventricular septum. We will have here the septal leaflet as a fixed structure. Because of the anterior leaflet is the largest one ever, the majority of all the echocardiographic views, the anterior tricuspid leaflet will always be there. So the only view that might have some difference is the RV inward, the RV inflow view, because we have the anterior leaflet towards the side from which the probe comes and uh, the other leaflet in the majority of cases will be the posterior leaflet. In a minority, it might be the septal leaflet. Why this is important? Because in cases of um, um, abnormalities, organic abnormalities in the tricuspid valve for the sake of uh, nomenclature, we will need to define the pathology related to which of uh, the tricuspid valve leaflets, like having a vegetation, having a perforation, having a flare leaflet, you need to uh, identify which leaflet is affected and to inform your surgeon what would be his management plan. Um, here for um, 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 identification of what we have, this is the RV inflow uh, view the right atrium, the right ventricle. So from uh, the part uh, closer to the uh, probe, this will be the anterior leaflet. And this is uh, the posterior leaflet in the, ma the majority of patients. In less occasions, it can be the septal leaflet. However, in the parasternal short axis view, this will be the septal and this will be the anterior in the apical pole chamber view. This will be the septal, this will be the anterior and the subcostal view, interventricular septum. Thus, this will be the septal and the other one will be the anterior leaflet. Um, now coming to focus more on the uh, assessment of the function. How and what to assess in the right ventricular shape, structure, and function. We will divide this part into two major components, and none of them can replace or completely uh, uh, is an alternative to the other. The qualitative assessment and the quantitative assessment. The qualitative, which means that you will judge it by your eyes, and not essentially represent your judgment in terms of figures or numbers. Like the size, we have to uh, be very confident to express that this right ventricle is dilated, although it is within the normality range for uh, the figures, when we are uh, having a right ventricle that is as big as or larger than the left ventricle of the same patient. The right ventricle, should be smaller than the left ventricle in the range of 90% or so and so. The shape definitely will not have uh, enough figures to represent the Epstein or the Epsteinite uh, um, um, uh, appearance of the right ventricle or the dilated parts of the cavity, particularly the outflow tract or a thin paper uh, walls of the right ventricle. The McConnell sign, which have been very familiar for uh, representing patients with acute pulmonary embolism by having the a hyper uh, contractile, hyper functioning RV apex while um, uh, dysfunctional and hypo uh, contractile other uh, parts of the RV wall. 
On the other hand, the quantitative assessment will have um, a more focus now on the coming slides. We will um, um, shed some lights on linear dimensions, RV function, and we will uh, put it into two divisions. So the volumetric representing the RV volumes, the 3D evaluation and strain strain rate assessment of the right ventricle. We will just shed lights on the topics. However, they will have uh, different separate topics uh, in this series of lectures. The linear dimensions. Again, we need to remind each other to have standardized dimensions that are able to be compared in future studies. You need to get the RV focused appropriate apical full chamber view, having the apex at the LV apex, not the RV apex, rotating slightly towards the right and the left until you have the widest uh, cavity of the right ventricle here you have the appropriate and the standardized view. Uh, the RV uh, first diameter or the basal diameter is got at the very basal part towards the, at the widest dimension of the RV and almost midway between the basal part and the apex, we will have the second diameter or the mid cavity diameter. The longitudinal uh, uh, plane or the longitudinal length will be from the RV proper apex till the tricuspid valve annulus. Um, uh, for the outflow diameters, we can get the uh, RVO uh, uh, tract diameter from the parasternal long axis view and from the uh, parasternal short axis view. In the parasternal short axis view, we have uh, um, um, the way to get the proximal RVOT and the distal RVOT. Distal RVOT is just uh, basal to the pulmonary valve, and the RVOT is at uh, the midline uh, of the aortic valve. When we measure the RVOT from the parasternal long axis view, because it is um, um, have different um, uh, ranges for normality, we have to mention this. And this is how uh, the uh, uh, consensus document for chamber quantification that was um, uh, conjoined between the American society and the European societies uh, for echocardiographies represented the normalities and uh, uh, the standard deviations for the diameters of uh, and the dimensions for the RV different parts. The, uh, when uh, I need to emphasize again that when you get the RVOT diameter from the parastar in a long axis view, you have to mention that the distance from the legs, uh, but if not mentioned, you uh, mention if this is uh, the proximal or the distal, which means that you have it from the short axis view. Um, running into the function, um, the RV function, again, because it is a very complex structure that cannot be uh, illustrated and demonstrated appropriately in a 2D view, um, uh, um, we have been for a long period of time um, getting the easy way to assess the RV function by assessment of the longitudinal shortening of the RV cavity. And this is either by the amount of migration of the tricuspid uh, annulus, which represents the RV base towards the RV apex. If, they, if you are speaking about the amount of migration or amount of excursion in centimeters, this will be the TAPSI. And if, if we uh, were representing the velocity of this migration, this will be the S prime. This is uh, appropriate and have been correlated with the global RV function and the clinical outcomes. However, this is um, a little bit oversimplification of the contractile function of such a complex shaped uh, uh, structure into um, one single function of the longitudinal shortening of a certain and a single certain point. Uh, however, um, till we uh, have further uh, uh, ideas about the other uh, uh, contractile functions of the RV, this have been accepted for long uh, decades. Uh, and are very, very reassuring to have them in the normal range. Um, by M mode, we can get to the TAPSI, and it represents the uh, tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. And this is the amount of migration in millimeters, and we are accepting anything above 16 or 17 millimeters. And on the other hand, if we trace it by tissue Doppler, the S prime will represent the velocity of migration and we can accept anything above 10 millimeters per second, uh, sorry, 10 centimeters per second, 
uh, and we usually assume that any figure below six centimeters per second represents significant function of the RB function. I need just to um, um, uh, emphasize again with my colleagues that these parameters are not very confident to represent the RV function after a trochabit valve repair, particularly if the surgeon have told us that he uh, implanted a rigid ring because a rigid ring will cause significant limitation to the um, annular excursion in terms of magnitude of migration and the velocity of migration. And it will be always underestimated despite the fraction area change or the other parameters for the global contractile function of the RV cavity will be very normal. So ensure uh, when you have a good looking RV uh, in terms of contraction with an impaired longitudinal function that your patient does not have a prior tricuspid uh, repair, uh, particularly with a rigid ring. Uh, for the global systolic function, um, again, despite it is a little bit more consolidating about the global function of the ventricle, however, it is taking it from a single uh, view of a complex structure, but the fractional area change definitely um, um, uh, offers more uh, assessment of the RV function than the longitudinal functions previously mentioned. Uh, and it represents the magnitude um, of change between the trace area of the RV cavity uh, from the diastolic frames to the systolic frames. It is equated as the end diastolic area minus, minus the end systolic area over the end diastolic area. Normality is always range between 40 to 45% and a number below 35% represents significant dysfunction of the RV. Uh, now we have the rim or the right ventricular <coughs> index for myocardial performance. Uh, previously, it was um, assessed by using the pulsed wave Doppler. However, there was a huge limitation for this because we take two different cycles at two different views uh, to get uh, that tricuspid uh, continuous wave uh, at uh, a plane and uh, the pulmonary uh, uh, continuous wave at a different plane. Uh, however, um, um, lately, it has become um, um, mostly replaced by uh, the RIMP that is assessed by the tissue Doppler because we can get the whole information from a single view, from a single cardiac cycle in a single uh, point of examination. By um, similarly, uh, the same uh, view that you have to get the S prime, you can get the RIMP from uh, the tissue Doppler at tracing the tricuspid valve uh, lateral or the free annular score. And the RIMP is detected by uh, the ratio between the non-ejection part over the ejection part, the ejection time from the cardiac cycle in the right ventricular perspectives. This is by the summation of the isovolumetric contraction time the isovolumic relaxation time, this sum is divided over the ejection time. Um, 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 and now for simplicity, uh, it has been um, um, uh, recommended to take this point to that point, which is uh, the tricuspid closure to opening time, the tricuspid valve closed here from the prior cycle and will open here in the next cycle. So this, the very outer to the very outer lines represent the tricuspid closure to opening time. You take it first, you subtract from it the ejection time, where the time the pulmonary valve opens and the, tri and the right ventricle ejects into the uh, RVOT or the pulmonary trunk. And uh, this uh, difference is um, uh, divided over the ejection time. It is uh, the TCO minus ET over the ET. And the normal values for the RIMP that is assessed by uh, the tissue Doppler is anything above 0.54. Uh, again, from the same paper, the uh, chamber quantification consensus document, these are the normality or accepted figures for the RV uh, dimensions. And these are for the RV function, the S prime by Doppler, uh, the fractional area change, uh, the pulse Doppler derived myocardial performance, uh, performance index and the tissue Doppler derived myocardial performance uh, index. Uh, now, uh, jumping into the valvular dysfunction. 
uh, we need to be very focusing that the ECHO report should not just shed lights over the severity of valve dysfunction, but it needs, uh, again, to look thoroughly for what is behind it. What is the mechanism or the etiology of the valve dysfunction? Uh, is it primary due to an organic uh, affection or organic abnormality in the valve structure, or it is secondary just due to functional impairment of the coaptation or the valve function? And not uh, infrequently, we might encounter a mixed pathology between organic and functional. Um, uh, for simplicity, and because it is very true, for the right-sided valves, acquired lesions are mostly functional rather than organic. The, the functional or the secondary uh, chains are much, much more common than having organic and primary uh, valve dysfunctional etiologies. However, the congenitals are always organic. Um, um, this comes from the American-focused uh, update for valvular heart disease that was published a few days ago. Uh, and I uh, borrowed from this slide, this star particularly, because this uh, identity has been a big exclamation mark for a long uh, time of period. However, uh, here it classifies uh, um, the etiologies or uh, the reasons for tricuspid regurg into primaries or organic and secondaries or functional. The primaries are essentially rheumatic, infective endocarditis, yet rogenic. And this is commonly seen with uh, um, um, the high prevalence of implanting cardiac devices nowadays and the endocardial myop biopsies, particularly uh, for the expanding cardiac transplantation workup. Uh, and the congenital like Epstein, Levo, uh, or the LTGA and others. The secondaries are essentially pulmonary hypertension with RV remodeling that can be for primary or secondary to left side valve and the dilated cardiomyopathy. The star that uh, I found very interesting now, because we have been discussing for long, particularly in our grand rounds, the term of isolated tricuspid regurg. When we see uh -huh. significant tricuspid regurg, we cannot find a proper explanation or justification from the left side or the right side uh, of the heart. And now the American Society of Cardiology acknowledges that isolated tricuspid regurg is uh, the secondary tricuspid regurg due to annular dilatation that is frequently seen with very normal uh, left side of the heart, uh, ejection fraction above 60%, normal left sided valves, no pulmonary hypertension uh, with a pulmonary artery systolic pressure less than 50, and usually it is seen with normal appearing tricuspid valve leakage. This identity will be of utmost importance and it is a big field for research for the coming years. Um, and again, why the majority uh, um, of tricuspid regurg is secondary and what happens in the secondary tricuspid regurg or the functional tricuspid regurg? As a matter of fact, when the RV is subjected to volume overload or late after pressure overload, because the left ventricle have thick muscle and the interventricular septum, the thick muscular interventricular septum is a common part between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The septal part of the right ventricular cavity and thus the part opposite to the septal tricuspid leaflet is the least to dilate uh, opposite uh, um, the RV increased overload. Because of the anterior leaflet shares partly into the interventricular septum and thus the thick and muscular wall of the right ventricular side, it uh, is the second to follow. However, the posterior leaflet, which is the furthest uh, from the interventricular septum and the left ventricle, um, uh, will give way uh, largely when the right ventricle is subjected to uh, uh, volume overload. And this is represented in this beautiful diagram. The anterior leaflet, the septal leaflet, and the posterior leaflet. Despite we know that the anterior and septal leaflets are natively the largest parts, uh, uh, the septal leaflet, when the RV expands or dilates to get dysfunctional, uh, it increases by 10%. We mean by the septal, the septal part of the right ventricular wall, so that is opposite to the septal leaflet. 
uh, the anterior part of the right ventricular wall opposite to the anterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve uh, increases by 40%, while the posterior leaflet, which is normally the smallest portion of the right ventricular wall, increases by 80%. This is because it has no uh, um, close proximity to the thick walls, interventricular septum or the left ventricular wall to support it. And thus, it is the uh, um, uh, largest uh, or the weakest part of the RV free wall that will obey the increased wall tension by the volume overload, the chronic volume overload. Does this have a significant implication? Yes, for sure. Because the uh, parts uh, of the um, um, tricuspid annulus that dilates will dilate between the anterior and the posterior leaflet, the septal and the posterior leaflets. And this will uh, cause large gaps that will be translated into a huge defect of coaptation being the, having the posterior leaflet the smallest of all of the three leaflets, while the side of the posterior leaflet expands largest uh, expansion uh, opposite the RV uh, increased overload. And again, this uh, has been uh, of huge interest for uh, the interventional cardiologists who are planning and developing and refining uh, the techniques for the percutaneous um, uh, managements and uh, repairs for the tricuspid valve. Uh, what we need to know that because this mechanism, um, um, this obeys in the natural ratios of the anterior septal and posterior leaflets distribution of the RV wall. Uh, um, the, after the RV expands largely or uh, uh, dilates largely, uh, this is accompanied by this alignment and this regulation of uh, the uh, distributions of the papillary muscles with further and further dysfunctional of the tricuspid valve closure mechanism by leaflet stithering. Uh, that adds to the annular dilatation. And thus, we usually see and consider that the secondary tricuspid regurg is a progressive mechanism uh, that is usually irreversible. Um, um, again, this from uh, the American College of Cardiology latest guidelines where um, uh, the tricuspid regurg um, um, parameters for severity remains as it was. Uh, and it is exactly the same as the um, um, uh, parameters or the criteria for severe tricuspid regurg as represented in the earlier uh, 2017 European Society of Cardiology guidelines, a vena contracta of more than seven millimeters, uh, be the radius more than nine millimeters, uh, and a regurgitant fraction uh, more than 45%. Um, um, the, the big advice is usually because there are severe limitations for every single uh, parameter to be used in echocardiographic assessment of tricuspid regurg and any valvular regurgitant lesion so that we need to emphasize our conclusion by having uh, the parameter of severity from more than one uh, item or from more than one uh, method. Uh, the Vienna contractor represents the narrowest part uh, of the flow convergence as it narrows down to pass through the regurgitant orifice before it expands into the right atrial cavity. This narrowest part of the neck of the flow convergence, if it was more than seven millimeters, this identifies a severe tricuspid regurg. And this is best uh, assessed by a Nyquist limit, the Nyquist limit, the default for most of our machines, that is between 50 and 60. Uh, for uh, the visa, the visa, uh, is usually assessed with a Nyquist limit around 30 centimeters per second. And the regurgitant fraction, if more than 45% represents a severe tricuspid regurg, while the visa radius from the upper to the point of uh, uh, the tricuspid leaflets line coaptation, line of coaptation, if it is more than nine millimeters, it represents severe tricuspid regurg. Uh, the tricuspid stenosis as a matter of fact, the etiologies, uh, as described previously, when if we compared it, usually the tricuspid stenosis is uh, due to organic reasons. Likely, if they are rheumatic and commonly aromatic, tricuspid stenosis is associated with rheumatic affection of uh, left-sided valves and commonly have uh, tricuspid regurg by site. 
the congenital that can be isolated tricuspid stenosis versus atresia or associated with other complex congenital anomalies. The carcinoid syndrome affects primarily the right-sided valves, tricuspid and pulmonic. Um, it might be a prosthetic valve degeneration in the tricuspid position, or in some occasions, it is secondary to impedance to the opening of the valve by a mass, either uh, an atrial myxoma or vegetation that uh, mimics the function and the clinical picture of a tricuspid stenosis with normal valve uh, structure. Tricuspid stenosis is identified as severe when the mean gradient is more than five or um, in some literature, seven millimeters mercury. And when the pressure half time is more than 190 millimeters uh, per second, because uh, the tricuspid valve area is quantified as 190 over pressure half time of the tricuspid uh, jet. And this means that uh, pressure half time more than 190 milliseconds uh, uh, is equivalent to a tricuspid valve area of less than one centimeter square. Uh, the pulmonary valve, as a matter of fact, uh, um, uh, pulmonary valve dysfunctions are usually um, uh, congenital, representing 95% of TV dysfunctions. Uh, often the pulmonary valve anomalies are associated with abnormalities in the pulmonary artery and its branches. And as a matter of fact, this might have very significant implication over uh, the management uh, strategy. Likewise, in um, pulmonary valve stenosis uh, that is seen with um, um, uh, patients born with uh, uh, fallow tetralogy. Um, despite it might be at the valve or uh, the subvalvular levels, however, what mandates uh, the initial uh, management strategy is that the diameters of the pulmonary artery and pulmonary artery branches, because when they are very small, uh, we cannot go directly for uh, complete repair. Uh, we have to do for these neonates shunts first in order to increase the flow into the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary artery branches, and a staged full repair will follow uh, in few years. Um, acknowledging that the pulmonary valve etiologies are mostly due to congenital, uh, the very recent American guidelines that have been published a few days ago jumped from the section uh, number nine of the pulmonary valve disease directly into the section number 10 of mixed valve disease, uh, um, reporting that uh, pulmonary valve disease should be locked further in uh, the guidelines for the management of adults with congenital heart disease. However, for the acquired uh, etiologies that we can uh, meet and see with adults uh, for pulmonary uh, uh, valve stenosis, carcinoid, radiation, rheumatic are the most common etiologies. And for pulmonary valve regurgs, um, 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 usually we, have CV, we see that with pulmonary hypertension, uh, with idiopathic, with Marfan, and inf infective endocarditis. Uh, the important notes that we need to uh, report before we uh, finish our lecture that for the right-sided valves, it is important to know that trivial to mild tricuspid regurgitation is seen in 85% of healthy subjects. Moderate tricuspid regurgitation can even be seen in up to 10 or in some uh, literature books in 15%. Trivial to mild pulmonary regurgitation is normally uh, present in 80 to 90 percent of normal subjects. And thus, if you met a normal valve and structure with normal chambers, size and function, and normal loading conditions without RV pressure overload or pulmonary hypertension, we should accept that a trivial to mild leaks in the right sided valves are accepted as normal variants. By this, we come to the end of our lecture, and thank you for your uh, attention. Dr. Fouad. Dr. Ahmed, Hadra Gamila. Now, Hadra Habibi is a lady, so I'm looking at the chat. I'm looking at the chat. Dr. Ahmed. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam, Dr. Hussein Bizay, Hadra. Salam alaikum. هل هل في قيمه للدايستوليك فانكشن في 
في الرايت سايد اسسمنت يعني هو بصراحه مذكوره بس طبعا انت عارف ان احنا بننسى الحاجات دي كلها فهل في قيمه ليها؟ يعني ده ستوري فانكشن نفسها ليها قيمه؟ امونجست uh, الحاجات اللي احنا قلناها دي كلها فهو الحاجه اللي مذكوره ومكتوب عليها شويه كلام في الليترتشر هي موضوع الريم لان هو ده از ا ماتر اوف فاكت بيعمل جلوبال اسسمنت لبوث ذا دايستوليك اند ذا سيستوليك فانكشنز انما بقيه الحاجات اللي احنا ذكرناها حاليا كلها هي اسينشلي بتكسبرس السيستوليك فانكشن الدايستوليك فانكشن الحاجات السوفستيكيتد اللي ممكن انها تيجي بقى من التشو دوبلر والكلام ده على ما يبدو ان هي حتى هذه اللحظه كلها هتبقى حاجات انفستيجيشنال هي جود فيلد اوف ريسيرش وزي ما اتفقنا هو الرايت فينتريكل هاز بين فور ديكيدز ذا فورجوتن فينتريكل ذا تراكاسبيد هاز بين ذا فورجوتن بال واحنا بدانا نحاول نفتكره معاك اهو تمام هو اي يعني هو ملو يعني ات هاز نو رول نوعا يعني ما لهاش اي امبليكيشن يعني يعني ده ستوري فانكشن اي امبليكيشن خلينا نقول ان احنا ما فيش عندنا دلوقتي ايفيدنس على ان هو ليه كلينيكال كوريليشن للكلينيكال اند بوينتس او للبروجنوستيكيشن انما هنعمل رسائل في ايه يعني لو قلنا زيك كده تمام شكرا يا احمد شكرا ماشي ماشي احنا دكتور احمد السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ازيك حبيبي هايل از يوجوال يعني ربنا يبارك فيك يا فندم كلنا تلاميذ دي من احد فوائد الكورونا ان احنا نبعدين لسه في البيت ولسه كده وبنسمع الكلام الجميل ده يعني كان زماننا دلوقتي خدنا ساعتين مواصلات رايح وساعتين جاي عشان نسمع الكلام الحلو ده احنا دايما من الشرف لما بنسمع احمد دلوقتي الترايكاسبيد ريجيرج ده احيانا بتلاقي الايكو جاي لك بالسيفير تراكاس بدرجر استيميت بالمونر هايبرتنشن قد كده وكلينيكالي بتلاقي العيان ما فيهوش حاجه خالص لا في ليفر ولا في نيك فينز ولا في حاجه تكورليت مع الكلام الموجود ده فهل الطريقه بتاعتنا في الاسسمنت بتاع تراكاس بدرجر فعلا بترفلكت ال اكشوالي البلمونا هايبرتنشن اكزاكتلي يعني ولا لا؟ لان في اختلاف ما بين الكلينيكال وما بين التراكاس بدرجرج اللي بيجي بالايكو وعشان كده انا اول ما بيجي لي تقرير ايكو وات ايفر هو اللي مكتوب فيه ايه لو العيان ما فيهوش اي ساينز خالص ورايت سايد افكشن أنا بحس إن في حاجة لا لسه كمان الأسسمنت بتاع الإيكو في تراكاس بدرجرج ده ده محتاج ري ايفالويشن تاني عشان إيه الكرايتيريا اللي نقدر نقول إن العيان ده فعلا عنده يعني هل الجيت نفسه ما بيبقى سمول جيت وطويل خالص كده فبيديني فيلوستي عالية جدا غير لما يبقى التراكاس بدانيولس دايليتن والجيت ما بيبقاش ليه الجيت الطويل ولكن الاريا نفسها بتبقى كبيره هل في حاجه تفسر الديسكريبنسي ما بين الكلينيكال وبين الايكو؟ هو الحاجه اللي احنا متاكدين منها ويعني انا احنا كلنا بنتعلم من حضرتك اساسا دكتور عصام ربنا يخليك لنا حضرتك والدنا كلنا ان احنا عارفين ان there is هيوج ليميتيشن في الكالر اسسمنت ان احنا ناخد الكالر بس علشان نكسبرس بيه السيفيريتي بتاعت اي ريجيرجيت جيت لان هو از ماتر اوف فاكت هو ده بيبقى البنتريشن بتاع الجيت معتمد على الديفرنس ان بريشر بتوين ذا تو تشامبرز وعلشان كده هو رقم واحد احنا عارفين ان ساعات كتيره بيكون في سيفير تراكاس بدريجيرج يؤدي الى significant underestimation of the pulmonary artery pressure that we derive from the echo ده لمجرد ان السيفير تراكاس بدريجيرج هيعمل fast equalization ما بين ال pressures بتاعت ال right ventricle وال right atrium وان بالفعل ال right atrial pressure بيكون عالي وبالتبعيه هو ال difference in pressure ال driving force لل تراكاس بدريجيرج تنجت بتكون very limited وما بتبقاش كفايه ابدا very fallacious as a matter of fact ان احنا نكسبرس بيها البلمونري ارتري بريشر 
فرقم واحد هو لا يزال بالرغم من كل التطور اللي حاصل في الفترة الأخيرة وبكل الحاجات الجديدة اللي دخلت في علم الإيكو والنان انفيسيف اسسمنت والام ار اي لسه واضعي جايد لاينز البلمونري هايبرتنشن وصممين على ان الدايجنوستس اوف بلمونري هايبرتنشن شود بي باي انفيسيف دايركتلي ميجر بريشرز ودي على ما يبدو هما مش ناويين يتنازلوا عنها ابدا ده لو دل على شيء يدل على ان فعلا النون انفيسيف اسسمنت اوف بالمونري ارتري بريشر ليها فالسيز كتيره جدا وغير قادرين حاليا لغايه دلوقتي على ان احنا نقدر نوفر كم الحاجه الثانيه هي اللي احنا كنا بنحاول نشير اليها ان ذا لاست سلايد ان وي شود اكسبت ليكينج فالفز اون ذا رايت سايد از لونج از ان دي مش عامله اي parameters that speaks of and this is severe or lee functional significance لا على the patient clinically ولا على the chamber sizes or functions. لو لقينا long jet were penetrating deep into the right atrium, ولكن the tricuspid annulus مش dilated. The left side chambers were valves normal. The pulmonary artery pressure. وإحنا لما جينا نعمله assessment with the tools that are available. هو apparently هو أقل من خمسين أقل من ستين. وكل حاجة بتقول إن الـ patient is good فإحنا هنقول إن ده الـ moderate والـ moderate اللي هو we accept within the normal variations between healthy subjects ده هيكون على عكس ما هنلاقي نفس الـ jet ده في واحد الـ RV شكله أكبر من الـ corresponding left ventricle والـ annulus أكتر من أربعة absolute أو أكتر من 21 ملي index على body surface area كل العلامات دي بتشير ان لا هو this regard has clinical significance and clinical impact على الهارت وبالتبعية هيبقى على الكلينيكال سايد انا اخر حاجة بس كمان عايز اضيفها علشان انا اسف هنزود بيها الديلمة بس هي ليها معرض مهم في الحتة اللي احنا بنتكلم عنها دي ان هو generally التريكاسبيد ريجورج والبالمونري ارتري بريشر هم very low dependent وهيتغيروا جدا كشكل وك velocities و distribution لما العيان يبقى volume loaded او ان العيان لما ياخد diuretics دي احنا اكتر حاجه حتى بنشوفها فيهم العيانين بتوع الدياليسز لو جت فرصه لحد مننا ان هو يعمل ايكو لعيان رايح يعمل الدياليسز الترا فلتريشن سيشن بتاعته فاحنا عارفين ان جسمه فيه اكسس فوليوم لايك 3 2.5 كيلو جرامز ولو صادف ان هو يعمل له another assessment immediately بعد ما خرج من الجلسه بتاعت السيشن بتاعت الدياليسيس بتاعته. فعلا سيفير تريكاسبيد ريجورج with dilated impaired right ventricle in the couple of hours during the session of dialysis can turn into mild. ودي احنا بنشوفها كتير جدا. فهو we need برضك ان احنا نبقى حاطين في اعتباراتنا ان الرايت سايدد dimensions و structure و valves و regurgitant Uh, legions بتبقى very low dependent uh, ينفع يتغيروا جدا لو العيان اخذ ال proper therapy including the directors. هو انا بس عايز ازود حاجه طبعا يعني هي نفس الكلام انت قلته يا احمد ان في الايكو يعني يفضل يعني بموضوع البرمونال هايبرتنشن الجايد لاينز اللي هي ايفن حتى يوروبيا او حتى الورد كونجرس قالوا ان انا يعني ما اقدرش اقول في الايكو ريبورت لو انا يعني عايز اعمل ايديا ريبورت ان ما اقدرش اقول بالمونو هايبرتنشن دايركت اي هاف تو سي ا بروبابيلتي اتس ا هاي اور او لايكلي هود ا هاي انترميديت اور لو اكوردنج لحاجات كتيره يعني مش جاست الترايكاس بيدريجن فيلوستي حتى هم مش ذاكرين حتى فكره البالمونو ارت ستوبريشن هم ذاكرين الفيلوستي از ا فيلوستي وحاجات ثانيه يعني موضوع الدايمنشنز موضوع البالمونري او اللي هو الاكسلريشن تايم بتاع الار في او تي الدايمنشن بتاع البالمونري ار في الاي في سي الريشيو بين الار في بيزال دايمتر وال في دايمتر يعني فكره البروبابيلتي يفضل في الايكو وانا بنصح نفسي وغيري ان انا يعني طبعا يعني محتاجه واحده واحده الواحد يعود نفسه على كده ان هو يكتب بروبابيلتي اتس ا هاي بروبابيلتي او اتس ان انترميديت بروبابيلتي ما اخشش مش ارش على طول على فكره ان هو لو قال ان 40 دوت مايلد 40 50 ده مودريت اكتر من 50 ولا واتيف اكتر من 70 هنا بنتكلم في في بروبابيلتي بتاع بتجمع نقط بتجمع كرايتيريا وعلى اساسها بقول ده هاي بروبابيلتي او انترميد او لو ده يفضل ان احنا نقول كده يعني عشان بس يبقى كلامنا نوعا ما يعني ستيك تو ذا تو ذا جايد لاينز ما اقولش ابسولوت نمبر لان النمبر ده مش مش دقيق في 
بدل على الكورليشن مع الانفيزيف ميجرمنت شكرا يا دكتور حسين بنتعلم منك دايما يا فندم انت استاذ ازاي؟ عارف كده؟ انت السنيور بتاعي يا حسام برضك الله يخليك يا حسام يا عم يكونوا اثنين حلوين زيكوا يقعدوا يعملوا كده غزل بعض قدامنا نعمل يا عم يعملوا ايه يعني؟ الله الله يخليك يا بيه ربنا يخليك ربنا يبارك فيك ربنا يخليك لينا يا دكتور عصام ربنا يكرمك دكتور احمد تمام كده واضح ان ما فيش اي اسئله من ال participants شكرا لو حضرتك حابب ان احنا ن... اه شكرا شكرا جزيلا شكرا دكتور عصام حضرتك شرفتنا ونورتنا شكرا يا دكتور حسام رزق وشكرا دكتور فؤاد وشكرا لجميع الناس ميرسي جدا يا شيخ سلام عليكم شكرا يا ولاد شكرا كلكم يعني شكرا فؤاد شكرا يا دكتور شكرا جدا